Welcome everyone, I'm Chris Dobbin and I'm thrilled to have, welcome you to obviously the Amplify Your Brand live series, the ultimate live on building a powerful brand in today's digital age. Along with my fellow friend and colleague on the screen there, Samoa, we're here to share the expertise and help you take your brand to the next level. So whether you're an entrepreneur, a small business owner, a marketing professional, or someone who's trying to tinker with their personal brand and not sure where to take it, this live stream is packed with practical insights and strategies that will help you amplify your brand and stand out in the digital landscape. So please get ready if you can, take some notes, take what we talk about today and put it into action because by the end of this live stream, you'll have a clear roadmap on how you build a brand that truly resonates with your target audience. So thanks for joining us today and let's find another way to amplify your brand. And the topic we're touching on today is going to be all about your brand design being decoded, unraveling the rebranding, restyling and revamping what these actually mean and uncovering the key principles and objectives to equip you with the valuable insights for navigating and transforming design processes effectively. Uh, I'm going to introduce Samoa here and just talk about the reason why we're touching on this topic because those three things we're touching on get confused a fair bit. Yes, they do, Chris, and welcome everyone to today's Amplify Your Brand podcast. Uh, let us know before uh, I get going where you're uh, watching this from and um, would love to have uh, your questions around one of these three topics. Last week, we talked about rebranding, introducing the topic, the specific situation where Twitter find themselves at this point in time. They are in the process of a rebrand. And today, we're actually explaining the three steps or the three different, slightly different processes that can exist and get usually mashed up into the word rebrand. Talking about the rebrand itself, a restyle and a revamp. A revamp. Uh, they are slightly different in uh, how they are executed. And today we're going to break those down for you. Hopefully by the end of today's session, you'll have a much clearer idea of how to address your future um, work projects that you need to either restyle, rebrand or uh, revamp. That's right. Um, so before I get into that, what I'm going to touch on the fact is that each week we are working through our uh, P8 framework uh, and this is a program that we've developed that takes you through from the uh, the purpose right through to how then we protect your brand as an ongoing brand. Today we are highlighting the persona section of the P8 platform uh, because this is where the rebranding, revamping and um, uh, restyling do come into consideration uh, because it deals more with the visual aspect. There is actually more to your persona than the visual aspect, but that will be also something we will touch on in the later part of this presentation when we get into that. So uh, as I've touched on, we have the rebrand, the revamp and restyling. Uh, three steps that really do get all sort of for some reason bundled under rebranding. But as you hopefully will find out when we go through this series of steps, that there is actually a very distinct reason why you would apply one of these to wherever your business or your brand is at, at this point in time. So we'll start off with where we touched on and I guess kick off from last week. So last week we talked about things being a rebrand is a comprehensive and strategic process. It involves changing not just the visual elements of your brand, but also the core identity. So values, messaging and positioning. It often occurs when the company wants to significantly change its image, target audience or market perception. So the rebrand kind of goes beyond a simple makeover. It's about redefining the brand, stand, what stands for, how it connects with the audience. And this also might include changes to the logo, the color palette, typography, tagline, and even the brand's name. We've been through that process. The goal is to create a new compelling identity that resonates better than the company's current goals and target audience. So like we, we do this all the time um, and we touched on, uh, we went for a, a whole episode last week about this where uh, there are so many reasons why this is a good idea and there is also how you do it properly and how you go about it the wrong way. Um, because it's not just, hey, you know what, today I really like the color blue, our logo is red, let's just change it to blue. You know, like, <laughs> it's not that simple. <laughs> That's right. Um, very deeply tied to how to go about it is when to go about it. And That's we right. focused on a few situations last week. That has to do when a brand wants to shift uh, its culture. That has to do when 
a product needs to be taken out of the mix. Uh, that happens when there is a change in leadership. That happens when a company refocuses or upgrades or re-niches themselves. So this is not just a, a, um, a visual, a cosmetic approach to changing a, a, the company, how it looks from the outside. It actually starts on the very inside, which is, again, mm -hmm. the example that we created with a parallel of Twitter, what they're going inwardly so that they come uh, to the outer world and express it in a visual manner. That's right, yeah. Um, and look, Twitter is probably something we, we keep going back to, but it's it's doing things so differently to how anyone else would ever do it. Um, but it's kind of, I look forward to revisiting this whole entire process that they've gone through uh, and unfolding it when we get into it. Because, you know, as I said, they are breaking all the rules. Elon Musk is known for breaking rules, but I think this one at the moment is still bewildering and uh, definitely worth watching from the outside. But um, as we touched on last week, rebranding usually is something that just, it feels like you have to do it. We, we know there's an itch you have to scratch. We're not sure why it's there, or sometimes you know exactly why it's there, and then it's how you execute it. That's how rebranding becomes something that you have to kind of do. And it's rebranding is an overhaul. It's like changing a lot of things at once in one go and understanding why you're doing it. And then, as I said, going about the execution. When we get into the other two that get mixed into rebranding, you'll understand why they exist and they're not rebranding. They're not what we're talking about when it comes to this just total, like, shut it down, everything we've done, and let's mm. look at a new way of communicating that either via visuals and a combination of other elements such as either copyright, photos you use, placement of your things, even introducing new products or services or how you go about those products and services. It is a it is a big exercise that you go through, uh, and not a lot of businesses can afford it either. So right. yes. this is why uh, sometimes even when someone does a rebrand, that's why they fail miserably as well, is that the, the, the tent pole is put right out there in front of them, and they've said, this is what you have to now start believing in and living. But sometimes that the culture in the company isn't ready for that, that change. And so right. you've got to look at not just externally but how internally your brand will go about this rebrand so absolutely uh, yeah so uh, i guess we, we've got some examples that we're going to go through later on i don't know whether we're going to do that now i think we're going to talk about the three topics first and then we'll go into them so yeah so let's move on to the next one which is looking at the restyling uh, and this is a common one that gets mixed up with what we're doing but a restyle is also known as a brand refresh or an update. It involves making the visual adjustments to the brand's existing elements without undergoing a complete overhaul. It's more a subtle approach. It's aimed at modernizing the brand, maybe looking at while retaining its core identity. This could include refining the logo, updating the color palette, and refreshing the typography, making minor adjustments. And a key word there is minor adjustments to the visual assets. So a restyle is usually chosen when the brand's essence remains relevant but some of its visual aspects feel outdated and it needs a contemporary touch. The goal is to enhance the brand's appeal while maintaining the recognition and much its existing audience. So, Sim, I think this is probably the most common version of what people consider a rebrand, but yeah. it's it's not. It's a it's a rebrand. <laughs> it's a yeah, yeah, it's a restyle. Sorry, a restyle. The, the interesting part is that um, we we can never tell for sure uh, from our end and from the client's end, what happens is that through a process of uh, asking a lot of questions and unfolding why this is happening, what are the reasons behind wanting to make that visual statement? Because again, this process uh, creates a lot of ripples throughout the, the, <laughs> the appearance. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> if you need to change all your touch points visually just on the outward, uh, on, on the outside uh, world, let, let alone inside. So your uh, print touch points, your existing uh, built signage, your uh, vehicle, your anything that has a current outdated image will then need to be uh, upgraded. And sometimes that happens organically just because of, na of the nature of the business, whether that be digital and it flows onto the, uh, it just gets buried by the amount of new content that gets put out with the, the, the new restyled visual identity, 
or uh, it, 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 it goes back to the physicality of its presence and the companies need to allocate not just a part of the budget for the reselling itself, but then to reformulate and update the existing uh, brand touch points. Yeah, I mean, restyling is actually the closest to coming that time when we say to the client, yes, you need a new logo <laughs> like that. <laughs> that's kind of where this sort of starts to become that thing. But um, sometimes, and I think the key was with what we were talking about there is that it sometimes restyling doesn't mean you have to change all the core aspects of your business. Hmm. Like that's the key to this, right? Is that you're, you, yeah. you can still run your business how you've been running it. You can still communicate the same things you're, you've been communicating, but now you're doing it in a different visual way and a different way that communicates that message so that it feels new. It feels different. Um, so your business's core essence, essence might be correct in how it goes about it, but externally and how it's perceived needs to be changed. And like we touched on earlier, that could be a number of reasons to do with brand, I'm um, sorry, with technology changes, uh, consumer changes in trends and how they receive information or consume it or the um like we touched on some brands may have been born in the 70s and there was a particular design style that worked really well then uh but you know now you have to modernize it and that's where Absolutely. i guess restyling comes into this conversation um so that you are looked at as still trending with what is going on and you feel modern you don't feel dated uh this is really where I think, um the re restyling comes into its force. Um, so is there any other things you'd like to touch on with that? Because um, uh, yeah, that's examples. pretty much it. The, it, it this is a, uh, the way I perceive it. And because I've operated in this space for long, for as long as I have, I would say this is actually the one that gets as close to cosmetic uh, change approach only as the other two. The rebrand is the deep core inner work. The revamp is an add-on, is it's a slight upgrade, but the restyling is is really uh, most surface level kind of uh, of work. And, and you mentioned very good examples. Um, yesteryear's companies may be still around today, but they don't function in the same colors uh, because back in the day there was not digital. Now they need to create digital um, ways of expressing that brand and their products and services. So the, that restyling is uh, is almost inevitable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And as I said, we're going to get into some examples that we've done uh, ourselves. And then we've actually got some examples of like I do every week, we talk about um, some big brands that you know, very well that have done this effectively over the years. Um, and when we mention them, you'll, you'll actually identify, yes, I did notice that happening, or I had an experience with that. Um, and you'll either now love that brand, hate that brand, or you at least will know that it's different you just you won't be saying it's the same as it was 70 years ago or five years ago it's you've seen the change so yeah um so getting on to uh the next aspect of this uh is the revamping so it's a more limited and tactical effort it's focused on improving specific elements of the brand design it might involve refining individual design components such as the the logo alone or a website as a communication point without making significant changes to the overall brand identity or messaging. So a revamp is often chosen when a brand wants to address specific design issues or adapt to the changing design trends. Unlike a rebrand or a restyle where the revamp doesn't involve a holistic approach, it's altering the brand's entire identity or strategy. It's more about addressing the immediate design concerns to keep with the brand visuals and keeping them appealing and up to date. So I guess like what we touched on in that last piece was revamping and restyling can probably get more confusing than actually a rebrand because i think we're trying to highlight here a rebrand is really it's like clean slate let's try and um, reposition the whole not just the visual aspect of our business but the internal workings of our business um, it, it does do a lot more where restyling is a little bit more cosmetic on the sense but it also touches on the whole brand revamping is specific elements of your brand that need touching up and this is most commonly these days an update to the website is usually the uh, example of this um, or it might be just simple changing of how the brochures work uh, in, in sort of if you still do print these days um, yes. uh, or as we touched on a tweak to your logo so it keeps the core essence of your logo 
but it just tweaks it enough that we know that we're making changes to it. And and the good example is the one you mentioned earlier, which is the digital color that was picked before. Uh, sorry, the the colors that were picked before digital were obviously a color that was trending at that time. But then when you put it onto a screen, it just may change the entire look and feel of yep. that brand. And so you actually have to go modernize that color, or you have to look at a better color palette. Um, or as touched on, you, you may have to just go get a whole new photo shoot done to make your brand look more modern because those 70s hairdos and, and most moustaches and things like that really aren't cutting it anymore. And although they're making a comeback, so maybe you've actually just had to keep the brand long enough <laughs> and fight for the noughties and you're here and you're back. <laughs> so, yeah, AFL to blame for that one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much all Movember probably is more uh, something else that's caused a whole change in how we, how we present ourselves. So yes yeah. um, um so in this particular category there is uh there is a funny uh situation i'll just let you finish that uh, that thought chris and, and i'll i'll grab that one yeah no no you, you go ahead over all right <laughs> um so again uh self-prescription from the client side led to one uh interesting and, and engaging project i was part of uh, a few years ago i was um i was contacted uh for a rebrand as so worded by the client yeah uh, and this happened to be a um, a builder company that built specifically european styled and uh european character um homes and mm -hmm. they're going for a very um high level market people that have plenty of um plenty of investment capability to build their dream home so they specialize in serving these people because they themselves came from Europe. And yeah. as we progressed through the uh, the questionnaire, I kept finding that the answers that were valid two years prior, three years prior, were still valid to that day. So really, yeah. what they call the rebrand was not a rebrand in itself. It was just more of a restyle, and it needed to bring the entire visual identity up to scratch and make it modernized, make it actual. And that's what we did. We basically redesigned their logo, redesigned their um, printed uh, stationery, and some touch points that they had from sponsorship programs to um, other touch points that they had. Uh, the interesting part of this is that this project, just a couple, one year ago, um, yeah. evolved into a revamp because they added some more services. They weren't just building anymore. They were also projecting and designing at the... Um, at the conceptual level, they added that service and they became uh, partners with um, another company that provided that service to them. They needed to absorb that and communicate that to, that to the public, which turned into a revamp of their logo. So nothing else changed on the second stage. Only the logo changed and it needed to communicate what they added to their services of builders. They became also designers. So the logo needed to encapsulate that. And then uh, obviously a small um, recall of the, of the items that uh, included that logo was needed, but it, it's a case where the self prescription indicates um, a rebrand. It was not a rebrand. It's actually better for them that it wasn't as costly as a rebrand. It was more of a restyle job. And then recently it became a revamp. So those are situations where you can see the three cases happen all in one. Yeah, exactly. And we're currently working on a project at the moment where um, the the client doesn't need to change their logo because that would mean signage all their locations. Um, yes. They they don't need to change their color scheme because again that would change all their stores. But what they want to do is look at how they position themselves when they're doing campaigns and have a more campaignable um, communication. And so. What we've done recently is we've come up with some visuals and a, a strategy for them to position themselves that way. And we've come up with the uh, it, the illustrations that are going to execute that. And we've come up with the content and tone that go with this. And then through that, we've now got a new style, sub-style, I'd call it, like underneath their main brand is a color palette and a new way that they can communicate when they've got specials on, when they've got a new product in. Um, yep. and this didn't mean the logo changed. It didn't mean that all their stores had to change. It was simply just print off some posters, put them in store. They've got digital signage, so we can just change the digital signage. Yeah. Um, and so it's we all, can... all, all relatable to the original brand that they, they gave us to work with. 
That's right, yeah. So in this case, it was just a classic example of a revamping of what they had, the assets they already had, not a full-on uh, restyling or a, a full-on rebrand because the core business can run exactly how it is right now. It's just these nice elements that we're going to add to their promotional material will communicate them and position them where they want to be um, yeah. without getting rid of all those great assets that they have in place. And that's probably the key to this conversation too is that it's an expensive thing to rebrand. So uh, we would love to do rebrands all the time because it means we get to do all, all their collateral all over again and, you know, it's fantastic. But the the reality is most clients can't afford a full rebrand. So revamping and restyling is definitely something that you should explore um, when you get into that. So I think we're now going to get into some fun stuff and talk about some uh, rebranding examples that we've done recently. So yes. Yes, this yes, yes. is a great example of just simply handing out a card. It could be a little bit more of an experience. So do you want to talk to this one? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I've been working with this company before and after the rebrand. And basically what happened was through the COVID period, um, some things happened. The leadership went uh, in, in different directions and the original brand needed to uh, rebrand itself because the uh, it, well, the, the, the franchise name and the trademarking were taken one way, and then there was a, a new uh, pathway created by Evolution Fitness, which is the new direction for this uh, this company. The interesting part of, is that um, as Elite, it was targeted at a demographic that it did not make sense after the leadership change to continue heading down. And with that came a, a more targeted effort to serving um, more upskilled clients, uh, people who are busy, but very, very mindful of the needs for their ability to perform and where health is a major concern for them and their families. And they wanted to um, bring into their home the ability to work out without having to necessarily spend um, half an hour to an hour coming from into the gym being able to get a really good workout and, if possible, include family members because connection was important for them. Now, remember, these people are still very um, affluent. They're wealthy. Um, it, and this was the new direction that Evolution Fitness uh, took on as a brand uh, core uh, audience. So we have an example of what it was at the logo level and what it was at the stationary level and the new direction the brand took and the touch points. Um, that we'll, about, we'll, we'll show you very briefly. This is um, the first slide. And the second one is a couple of examples of their new campaigns and how they came to market. And um, the consistency, consistency with which they applied the two new main brand colors. Obviously, this is fruit of a lot of research and a lot of market uh, knowledge and testing. But um, I can guarantee that the new brand is doing a lot better than uh, what it used to be and what it struggled because, again, uh, deep-rooted issues that came out through the process of, uh, of the, the entire two-, three-year pro process that uh, most businesses underwent with COVID and lockdowns and all of that uh, just made this company have to adapt on the fly. And this was one of the, 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 the most challenging but most rewarding projects to be a part of because they literally had to rebrand everything and all the touch points and adapt has the the cues piled on the front door of the shop this was a very unique project but again like i said a very rewarding one so it's a case for a rebrand that uh, worked wonders for this particular client yeah um, touching back on the cards that you just had there before, um, so one of the things here is that the previous brand, not only was the, the colour scheme changed, but it was your standard card that they gave out. It was you know, your, your square card. When you knew the brand essence and what it was about and that its target audience was more the affluent type, they felt that that card needed to have impact when they handed it over. And this is a metal card. It's also yes. shipped as the logo. Um, it's built on the elite branding, as in the sense of the E is there. It's just it's evolved, literally, yeah. to evolution. <laughs> literally evolved. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so these 
aspects of knowing your brand well enough and knowing your clientele meant that this card became a natural fit for why they selected it. Yes. And obviously with the added benefit that every single instance that there is a card exchange, the inevitable wow uh, just really cements the brand presence in, in the, uh, the clients or the audience's uh, mind and perception. Yeah, that's right. And then obviously some of these graphics are fantastic and uh, you know really have impact rather than just being, in this case, it's not even about the equipment. You're really trying to illustrate what the aspiration of the audience is. They'd love to look like that guy. And you know, they want to get a great sale. This is going to be hot shot. So let's go for it. And in these examples, you've got some really great elements that make it fresh and clean. And it, it's very specific about where the audience is going to have to look to get the information to take mm -hmm. the next step on those sales. So mm -hmm. fantastic work. So let's get into revamping examples. Um, so this is a client that uh, I worked with years ago and then they came to us, that's how the packaging was on the left-hand side. And this is a gluten-free product. And a lot of gluten-free products really have a bad name. And even 10 years ago, before we started working with this client, um, they had uh, everything that was mentioned to be gluten-free, the straight, most common response from people was that it is cardboard right and we asked our client you know is your product taste any good he says we'll have a sample and we honestly when i sampled their cookies and things like that it's, it was no different to any other cookie it tasted perfectly fine it didn't have that cardboard feel to it so what also was is we inherited this uh, logo that came from the previous brand and obviously it's called celiacs and it's a bit silly and things like that but what I really wanted to highlight to them is that, you know, let's make this an experience. And like, if your food is that good, as you can see on the left-hand side, the sticker sits on top of the, the food, right? And <laughs> you can't see oh, it. Yeah. The product. So what we did was I said to them, let's make it see-through. And so the yak is the product and it's the one that loves it and wants to eat it. So make it the food. And as you can see, it's fur coat gets seen as the product and you can literally see it. Um, yeah. through that product and the experience that the client has had since this has gone on is sales have increased he's had a lot more inquiries and there's a lot of other opportunities that you know uh, commercially I can't mention what they are but they have had a fantastic response to it what I also want to highlight here is on the left hand side is how he represented himself and it was dark it was brown it was moody and I, I don't know if many people are gluten-free people out there but you know that a lot of brands in the industry are that color so what we did was took them down a different pathway, made them a bit more brighter, a bit more cleaner. And we also looked at the way the food was presented. So on the left-hand side, you can see a sausage roll there and up the top there, some frozen goods. This was how they were presenting the information. They were acting like a very small gluten-free brand. We then on the right-hand side, with not much of a massive spend on their budget, with small increases and incremental over the years, we took them to a place where... We actually show the oozing of the tarts food coming out of the product. We show how it can be presented. We've got the, the actual insides of the product being shown. This shows, because we position them as for real taste, that the food looks tasty. It looks appealing. So it doesn't matter if you're gluten-free or not. You want this food. And he's had such success with this um, that he, he's not just gluten-free people that eat his product. <laughs> it's actually now eaten because it's a product, not because it's gluten-free. So a bit of a success story there and how he's gone about that. So, um, you know, as I touched on earlier, with this particular client, the product did not change. As I just go back to it. The left-hand side, these are the same products. Nothing has changed except for how we positioned them visually in the way that the photos are presented. And obviously, as you can see, when he went to events, now you can see the lighting's changed, the, the thing looks brighter, the food looks a little bit more, and we've gone for the lighter colours to let the food, normally we go darker colours to pop, make things pop, but in this case, lighter work to make it feel more friendly, approachable, and, and sort of a more subtle, uh, lighter food rather than a heavy food, which is another thing that came across. That's another reason we went with the lighter colours too, was the dark colour, and everyone thought gluten-free food was heavy, by going this other way, it became lighter. And it just basically visual triggers said things without you needing to actually say it. And that's what's been successful for that client. So restyling. Um, this is one we've worked on recently where a, an accountant that 
basically specifically target targets tradies had a logo it was a really like messy logo that said too much uh the fonts were as you can see stretched um it, it basically it was a uh, yeah it was a, not not great a um, salad of um of attempts to say many things yeah exactly yeah um so they came to us and said can you clean it up and can you give us something and we'll show you in a second that it, the problem with this client was they are tax four and the tradies bit that's the primary company but underneath that they have a whole bunch of subsidiaries that they work with and they needed this logo to be kind of something that could become more than just the main logo so we had two solutions we had to come up with one was solve the problem of communication for this brand but then replicate it over and over and over again and so in this case the tax with the tick um rather than an x and a whole bunch of other factors i think actually i'm going to over talk what you may want to take into this logo because this is one of your magic pieces of work uh, sim so do you want to maybe highlight why you went for some of the elements and the font church choices and colors you went for uh basically the tick is what happens when you fill out the forms with uh, with accounting <laughs> it's it's one of the more prevalent um elements that you see visually uh, that was brought into the um the, the accounting ability of this particular client because like Chris mentioned he specializes in a niche and then those niches needed to be expressed through an ecosystem that made sense that collected uh, or th that showed cohesion throughout um, the different niches and they all understood it was coming from the same guy where the first logo that we saw we see there up on the upper left corner is trying to say, a few things, but we can't really tell what they are. A simplified lettering, lettering approach with a smart um, visual um, feature makes it more easy to uh, understand who it is aimed at. And with that, <laughs> let's walk you through the other niches that this accountant works with. So we're talking about the uh, truckies. We're talking about tradies. And we're talking about nurses as well. And the interesting part for this is that we're able to still speak to the same existing client base that he had without ostracizing anybody. Because remember, it's mostly nurses, it's mostly tradies, and it's mostly truckies that this client operates with. And none of them felt um, outcast or ostracized the moment they um, restyled their mm -hmm. uh, presence. So That's this right. is the example that comes out of being able to create an ecosystem with cohesion within the brand serving the same audience not changing the core at it at in in no capacity but just being a lot more practical with how you communicate what you do uh, to the outside world and through mostly visual uh, visual changes this is what the changes meant uh, change in color with a with a blue has the common uh, uh, common uh, trait, visual uh, trait for everybody. Uh, tradies, nurses, and truckies, they're all uh, starting with the blue, but then we're, we're talking a lighter blue for the nurses, we're talking about a, a uh, orange for the truckies and the red for the tradies. Yep. Yeah. So uh, again, this client is now successfully communicating uh, through these different formats and doing what they do and obviously uh for them it's easier it's got the tax four is there really the common denominator as you said the blue as well and then the color codes they were doing the color codes previously but it was done in a way that every brand had its own kind of look and feel and personality and they just there was no cohesion you didn't know it was from the same company yeah where that is now changed so great examples of that so we can keep going on and on and on, uh, but I think we've highlighted in short um, these things. But what I will uh, actually do is come back to us and we'll, we'll do the summary bit after we do these. I think we're going to go into some examples of brands that have done this. So um, Google over the years, they've made subtle changes to the logo, refining the typography and colors, maintaining the essence of the brand. So what's I think really interesting about Google is if someone said, that logo is different to the one that was back in the noughties, a lot of people probably wouldn't recognize it or know. It's not till you put them side by side that you realize 
that as, as was as was the case that Sergi yeah. and uh, his his mate um, was it Sergi and Brin? I can't remember. Or was it Sergi? Anyway, but anyway, the two guys that started Google, they literally typed it in, made a spelling mistake, opened up the thing, needed a color scheme, and went with it. And so it was literally not even a designer's sort of thing. It was just them doing it. Where now. Um, as much as the four colors, and I know Microsoft uses this and a few other technologies companies use this as well, but the way they do it now is so professional, it's so understood, and it's consistently done in a way that just seems so professional. It doesn't come across as a clown or a carnival, mm -hmm. the good brand. It, it really is respectful in how they do it. So over the years, they've done restyling efforts where they kept the logo modern and adaptable across various platforms, but they... They've only subtly changed it. It is not like totally changed. It's just that they've gradually yeah. introduced things and they've subtly touched on that um, approach. Incremental changes and also the, the cohesion part in the ecosystem of the brand touch points. Because if you think of all the products that Google offers, we're thinking, uh, we're, th we're, we're thinking and doing Gmail, we're thinking calendar, we're thinking maps. There is definitely a cohesion throughout the entire family of, of sub products that are expressed through the initial visual brand. You look at any of those products and you, you're able to, even if you lived under a rock for the last 30 years and you didn't know that they were uh, all the same brand, you would get there by association visually um, comparing the two. You can tell the, the calendar uh, is a stem of the Google logo. You can tell the maps is a stem of the Google logo. So that visual, rewiring of uh, restyling of everything they do really reinforce the ecosystem that they've been able to create with their brands uh, and sub brands. Yeah. So they're not rebranding, they're constantly restyling. And that's yeah. why, again, we've done this episode today is to really highlight the examples that are out there in the, the living world that <laughs> everybody knows, but you may not know it as a restyling you probably refer to it as a rebranding uh, and this is a good example so yeah. another one is instagram uh, it's restyled its logos moving from you know retro camera icons to more modern vibrant min minimalistic designs the symbolizing the evolution and the user experience so i think that one's a really obvious one where the original logo was brown and and sort of cream and it had a couple of uh, three colors on it and things like it was, that it was basically a visual depiction of the polaroid machine polaroid. <laughs> right exactly so um and obviously they were huge fans of um steve jobs because he was a big fan of that kind of styling as well all the apple apps and everything went down that pathway as well yes um, and where we are now is it's still the same shapes it's still the same you could put those two logos beside each other and say oh it's the same logo um but the the from our point of view what's difficult about it is the styling it's it's yeah. definitely subtle but it's there and it's um it's obvious it's the same logo but it's coming into a new look and feel that is modernizing it and going with the trends of the time um a couple of years ago they went through the um the gradient um what do you call it yes. vignette style uh, yes. because that was, again, something that came out of styling a couple of years ago, but they've now gone back to the more flat design, and so they're moving with the times. And being a brand like Instagram, they have to do it. Like, it's it's something they are forced to do because if they don't go with a trend, they're going to fall behind and TikTok's going to pop up and take it away from them or YouTube would or whatever other brand is, you know, fighting with them for that audience. So uh, a great example of how they've used that now, McDonald's in recent years have revamped its stores with modern interior designs, digital kiosks, and updated packaging. So this strategic revamp is aimed at creating a more inviting and contemporary dining experience. And this, this is obvious. Um, I'm not a big frequenter of McDonald's myself, but I do know when I'm driving by or I have visited with the kids and things like that, that the experience is so much different to how it was when I was a kid. Um, and this, to be honest, is across most food companies. They definitely have had a change in how they do this. Um, it's it's definitely a, um, I guess, a feel that you are going into um, a really modernised cafe or um, you feel like it's a high-end experience where previously it was a little bit down downtone. It was a burger shop. It had that <laughs> burger shop feel. It's yeah. definitely not that when you go into McDonald's these days. 
Um, the next example I want to highlight here is Starbucks, which we touched on last week about how they refined the design. Um, so they focused on taking the word coffee out of their name and putting it into expanding markets and how they went about that. We, we went into depth last week, but I just wanted to highlight again that Starbucks is another good example of where they have not thrown out everything with the kitchen sink. They <laughs> kept a lot of the core elements of their original brand. They took the word coffee off looked at some of the, uh, the, the, what's it called, this, okay, the mermaid, um, the visual element, element. That the village of element. Element. Kept that in. and for many people, they probably did not even notice the word coffee got dropped off. They just referred <laughs> to it as Starbucks and Starbucks. they were happy to, to go with that. Um, Netflix is something else that are continually revamping their platform, the user experience and the content recommendations enhancing. And the key here is it's not about the visual stuff. It's about understanding what their audiences want there are very subtle changes that netflix do to their platform but mm -hmm. most of it's subtle they don't yeah. go for the netflix logo again is probably something that if you go go back to the original it is very different but the change to that has been so subtle over the years that you have not noticed that it's happening so it's a, a revamping because we're looking at specific elements of their brand that needed to be changed not the entire thing so netflix did not change their name they didn't change their products and service offerings that much i know they've introduced new ones like gaming and a few other things over the years but that's again because it's naturally evolved it's yeah. not because they forced it down your throat um yeah. and down this pathway so great examples of some brands that have done this so i will turn that off and talk about this so really in summary a rebrand involves a comprehensive transformation of a brand's identity values and visual elements hopefully that's clearer now so it's when you do the whole kit and caboodle uh it's it's taking a whole new direction when you're restyling it's more about focusing on the updates of visual elements components retaining to a core identity so it's really just understanding that those those key things that make your brand visually what it is have to be updated and they're the things that need to be touched on where a revamp is a more tactical effort to improve a specific design element without making substantial changes to the overall branding identity the choice amongst these approaches depends on your brand's goals its current position and the extent of the changes that are required so hopefully everyone out there you have a clearer idea of the difference between uh the three and when you come to us and we uh, look at doing a rebrand with you, you may even just say, hey, guys, I'm going to hold back here. It's actually not a rebrand. It's just a revamp. I just need to touch up something. You know, can you help me out with that design? And we'll be super excited that you've done that and identified that uh, because it will help us fast track the conversations and the questions. Um, do you have anything to add to that <laughs> Sim, as, a, as a closing comment? I think you, you just uh, you just touch on everything that needed to. <laughs> Fantastic, guys. Well, look, it's been another fantastic session, and we're really happy that you've joined us. And obviously, we'd love you to reach out to us if you, as uh, Sim touched on, if you can tell us where you've been, where you're from, what you liked about what you've heard today. We are really welcome to feedback and uh, look forward to evolving what we do here with you to help you amplify your brand. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Catch you later, guys. See ya.